Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is from chapter number 4 of uh, EDC, book by Mr. Ballstead. And here we'll be discussing design operations with the help of example 4.24. So in the design operations, uh, a couple of things we have to keep in mind. First of all, so far we have discussed or the uh, was focused on existing network so we just solved the network that was given but while we designing we are actually given voltage and or currents and we are required to establish uh, the designated level of elements that means we have to find the value of the uh, resistances primarily And just to give you another example uh, of the doubt that my student had, you see the difference between these two circuits are, this is fixed bias and this is emitter bias circuit. The only difference is that we have connected an, a, a resistance here in the emitter. And the concept you can probably easily understand if you see at this structure, building a structure, and this extension, uh, is not stable. So to make it stable, we have connected a rod here or a, a, a pillar here to make it stable. Same thing here. This circuit is not very stable. So to make it stable, we connect a resistance at the emitter. Now the question is how big will that resistor be? And there is a rule of thumb that says that the examples examined in this chapter reveal that the voltage from emitter to ground, now this is emitter, emitter to ground, that is VBE, is typically around one fourth to one tenth of the supply voltage. So this is a given range, but actually most used is the one tenth of the supply voltage. That means we can write that VE is one tenth over VC. So this was the main doubt the student had that why we are taking one tenth. So I hope this is clear from here. Now let's solve the question. Determine the register value for the network. So this is the network given. For the indicated operating point and the supply voltage. So these two are the operating points and just for you to refresh your memory, if you recall this graph, this we this is the load line, and at this point we are establishing the operating point based on this base base current. And so this is ICQ, and this is VCEQ. So that is what is given here: ICQ and VCEQ. That means primarily we will be calculating things at the operating point. Now for simplification, I have eliminated all the capacitors because we know that the capacitors become open circuit in DC analysis. We are doing DC analysis. Also, I have marked some currents like this is IB, IE, and the terminals VC, VE, VB, etc. So let's solve now and the requirement is to find the value of the resistances RE, RC and RB. So we start with the uh, and this assumption we have to keep in mind the voltage from emitter to ground V is typically one tenth of the supply voltage. So let's first of all find VE. One tenth of VCC, VCC is 20 volts, so it will be 2 volts. So we have found this voltage VE. So from here we can easily find RE if we know IE. Okay, so RE is VE over IE. And we know that generally IE is approximated to be IC. So we can approximate it to be IC and now putting in the values 
2 volt and IC Q or IC is 2 milli ampere. So the rest uh, RE is 1 kilo ohm. And now for the other one, we'll, we'll use this circuit. Now what I have done here, I just change this in a way which is more convenient for writing KVL equations. So replace with the two batteries, same. And we'll, we'll, we'll follow this diagram to write KVL equation. To find RC, we'll follow this loop which is called the collector emitter loop or the right hand loop. So KVL at the right hand loop, we start from here, minus VCC, ICRC, VCE, and then VE. From here, ICRC is this value, and RC we are interested, so IC comes down. And now plugging in all the values, VCC 20, VCE 10 volt, VE we calculated 2 volt, and IC 2 milliampere, so RC comes to be 4 kilo ohm. So two values we have found, and now uh, we take the left loop to find RB. So this is the VCC for this. Uh, sorry, uh, left loop KVL equation minus VCC, IBRB, here is VBE, VBE, and then VE. From here, we separate IBRB, and then RB is VCC minus VBE minus V over IB, and now we could put all these values, but we don't know what is IB, so we can, but since we know IC, we can calculate IB. We know this relation that beta times IB is equal to IC or IB is IC over beta. So IC we know beta is given from here, 150. So IB is 13.33 microampere. Now putting in values of all the variables, 20 volt VCC, VBE, we know that in case of a transistor, silicon transistor, it is 0 0.7, 0 0.7 volt minus 2 volt and this current. So the RV value is 1.297 mega ohm. Okay, now in the book, uh, he has uh, not gone beyond, but in other examples, he has done uh, to find the standard value. So I'll, I'll follow that. The calculated values were these. Now we have to check with the standard table. Now this is the standard register table. So 1K is available in the standard value. 4K is not available. Either we have to use 3.9K or 4.3K. Since 3.9K is the closest, therefore we will use 3.9K. And then 1.297, we have to use 1.3 mega. So the, this, these are the standard values that we will use. Now a good practice is to verify what effect will these changes have from the calculated value. And for that we have to go into the circuit again and put in the modified values. And so let's, let me just see this variation in IC from the right loop. This was the equation from here. Now R will see I, IC now with the putting the RC value of 3.9. So putting this value, we get IC to be 2.05 milliampere, whereas ICQ was 2 milliampere. Now this is very, very negligible. It's only about 2.5% variation. So generally recommended is that if the variation is within 5%, then no problem. You can use it very comfortably. So I hope you have been able to follow this. Please let me know through your comments. Don't forget to share it with your friends and subscribe. Thank you.